Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell. We continue our series, Courtly Love and the Cult of the Virgin, focusing a little bit today on the veneration of Mary. After all we've discussed this month, it would be easy to assume that the practices of courtly love grew into the veneration of Mary in the church. Indeed, there has been a popular folklore tradition, especially among Protestants and non-Catholics, that the veneration and or worship of the Virgin Mary, known as Mariology, began during this time period in which we have focused. Of course, Mary's life was important in the biblical story since it was written and she is integrated throughout. The earliest recorded prayer to Mary was the Subtum Presidium, which dates to the mid-200s. After the Edict of Milan in the 300s, Christians were permitted to worship openly, and at the same time, the veneration of Mary also became public. The first Marian churches built in Rome date from the mid-400s. It was during this time in the 5th century that larger debates began about the exact liturgical positioning of Mary. The Third Ecumenical Council debated how Mary should be addressed, and it was a complex debate about wording and theology that had to do not only with Mary, but also with the essential assumptions about the Trinity. And the debate continued for at least a century, with some theological teachings affirming her title as Mother of God and some not. A century later, the teaching of the Assumption of Mary, her being lifted into heaven, became widespread. We're now in the 500s, and more churches were appearing around the Christian world dedicated to Mary. All of that to say that Mariology did not begin during the Middle Ages, so we cannot say that the practices and social thoughts of courtly love brought about Mariology, and yet... The growth and development of Mariology flowered at this same time that these concepts of a courtly reverence for high ladies also bloomed. Chants such as Ave Maristella and Salve Regina and Ave Maria became staples of chant and plain song, and devotional practices grew. More and more churches and cathedrals were constructed and dedicated to the Virgin Mary. Notre Dame Cathedral was begun in 1163, completed not quite 200 years later. The sects that we discussed, the Waldensians and the Cathars, were Marian sects, and the fact that these divergent groups were expounding on Mariology in ways beyond the Church's sanctions would have increased her importance within the social culture as a whole. And within the Church at this time, the Catholic Church was debating the exact time and nature of Mary's sinlessness, whether it was at conception or at a certain age. Popes issued decrees and authorized feasts and processions in honor of Mary, and in the 1200s, Pope Clement created a poem on the seven joys of Mary, which is considered to be an early form of the Franciscan Rosary. Mariology continued to grow and develop, and it was in the 1300s and after that the great art masterworks featuring Mary were made. It is important to note that as integral as Mary remained to the faith for Protestants, it was partially this flowering of Mariology and artworks and iconography that were also essential components of the Reformations and of the Protestant divisions. The Waldensians had gone so far as to suggest that even the reverence for the cross itself had grown into iconographic proportions of idolatry, and Waldensians were known for burning crosses in their search to purify the faith. This is all an extended way of showing that Mariology was definitely not created by the ideas of courtly love, but that these social ideas and the religious beliefs seemed to have a strong interplay, and we'll explore that a little more tomorrow as well.